What is a horror movie without its villain? Where would the Friday the 13th franchise be without Jason and his hockey mask, or Nightmare on Elm Street's son's Freddy Krueger? How would Halloween cope without Michael Myers? Well, actually, Halloween tried that in 1982 and everyone hated it, point proven. But without an evil to go up against, there is no hero for the audience to get behind. Without a monster to slay, an ordinary person can't be transformed into a god of horror cinema. Without an iconic villain, there could be no merch to sell, and that is the true horror. But you know what? Villains aren't always blood-drenched beasts. There's actually room for more subtle baddies in the horror genre. They just have to be compelling, like the ten that we're about to detail today. Because I tell you what, my friends, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the ten greatest horror movie villains of the 2020s so far. Number 10. The Creatures Underwater Though they may seem a little basic by today's standards, there's nothing wrong with a good old-fashioned creature feature. After all, the subgenre helped establish horror in the mainstream about a century ago. Justice for Boris Karloff, right? But one movie that sought a return to simpler times was 2020's Underwater, starring Kirsten Stewart as a medical engineer aboard a stricken submarine. Whilst drilling into the Mariana Trench, the craft gets struck by an earthquake, which means it's up to Bella Swan and her pals to save the day. Now, the movie is, uh, well, it's just fine, but there's nothing particularly special about it. It's a perfectly acceptable disaster movie. However, what really makes it stand out are the fantastically designed aquatic monsters that stalk the crew at every turn. The creatures are a real throwback to the likes of the Xenomorph from Alien or Bruce the Shark from Jaws, single-mindedly ruthless animals with a terrain advantage over the humans. They are frightening in the very simplest of senses, as they pick off submerged survivors one by one. And sometimes Sometimes it's okay to go back to basics when you do it this bloody well. Number 9. All the Men. Men. When it was announced that A24 was going to be distributing a film in which a woman gets trapped in a village full of creepy doppelgangers, hopes were understandably high, and 2022's men ended up being, well, alright, but not as good as people were expecting. Whilst Jesse Buckley gives an excellent performance in the lead role, the entire thing felt a little flat. But let's not take anything away from Rory Kinnear, who does an amazing job playing, well, everybody else. The James Bond actor plays most of the other parts in this film, as he takes on the multiple guises of the various male inhabitants of this cursed settlement. A small village full of people who all look the same is a great idea for a horror movie, and Kinnear is talented enough to pull off each individual character with distinction and aplomb. You could argue that he's not the real villain of the piece, a debate that we'll be returning to a lot throughout this list, but the many faces of Rory Kinnear serve as an immediate threat in this movie and become its most memorable asset. Number 8. Girl. Murder, possessor. It's a difficult task to tie down just who the baddie is in Brandon Cronenberg's Possessor. The lead character, as played by Andrea Reisenberg, is an assassin by trade, which isn't exactly a clear-cut good guy. Tasia Voss uses her ability to possess people's bodies to help pull off the perfect hit, but her resolve begins to crumble when she starts to lose track of who she really is. And that's where Gerda comes in. Portrayed by the fabulous Jennifer Jason Lee, Gerda is not a giant beam of metal as might be suggested, but rather Voss's superior. She becomes concerned when her charge expresses a desire to keep in touch with her own self, claiming she would be a much better killer if she learned to let go, which isn't exactly great life advice here. In a movie where professional murder is the name of the game, Gerda turns out to be the worst of a bad bunch. Not only does she endorse the killings of innocent people, but she also works to destroy the identity of the person she's supposed to be protecting. Now, you could argue that's worse, although killing people for money is pretty reprehensible. Number 7. Alexia Titan was anybody really surprised when French director Julio Ducournau turned in yet another insane picture in the form of 2021's Titan? This was the woman that gave the world Raw, aka Woman Eating Each Other, the movie. Now, Ducournau returned with a film all about Alexia, a woman who was in a car crash as a young child and had to have a metal plate inserted into her skull. Well, there's no problem there, people get metal put into their bodies all the time. This doesn't usually result in those people wanting to have sex with cars, though. Apart from taking the phrase going for a ride too literally, Alexia is also a serial killer. She may be presented as the protagonist, but there's no denying that she is also the antagonist of this piece. She commits some truly heinous acts across the movie, leaving a trail of destruction in her wake. Now, you could argue that it's not her fault, but she still does what she does. That only serves to make her character more compelling as you try to get to the bottom of this truly twisted individual. You'll never look at a gear stick the same way ever again. Number 6. The Apath, His House Remy Weeks' 2020 film His House topped many publications' lists of best horror movies from that year. 
The story follows two refugees from South Sudan who come to England to escape the terrible conflict that's plaguing their homeland, and the country really rolled out the welcome mat for the pair, as their caseworker is Matt Smith. What a great start to a new life, right? Well, of course, the husband and his wife face no end of issues whilst trying to assimilate to their new home. If this wasn't bad enough, there's also a terrifying witch that is haunting them. The Apeth, or Night Witch, terrorizes the couple because it believes they owe it a debt, and it uses all the tricks in the book – shifty noises at night, scary demonic figures, projections of their deceased daughters, all the classics. A truly chilling presence, the Apeth is a fascinating villain for a supernatural horror, and serves as a fantastic metaphor for the grief and trauma that has followed the pair overseas. You could say that the real villain of this picture is war itself, but that would open up a discussion that we just don't have time for now. Number 5. The Mother – Barbarian If you turned up at an Airbnb and found that Pennywise was staying in your room, then you'd probably think that he was going to murder you as well. But that's the scene facing Tess at the beginning of 2022's Barbarian. We're initially led to believe that Keith, played by Bill Skarsgård, is going to be the villain, but things soon take a rather unpleasant turn for everyone's favorite dancing clown. The real evil is revealed when Tess and Keith discover an underground passage beneath the rental house. Within lies the mother a deformed, animalistic woman who is the product of multi-generational incest. That's a hell of a lot worse than a guy who double-booked a room by mistake. The mother is a classic villain, from the way she looks, to the way she acts, to the sadistic things that she forces her captives to do. Matthew Patrick Davis has the rather thankless role of bringing her to life, but he does a bang-up job. Once again, you could argue that the mother is just a product of her surroundings, but when you have a character that forcibly breastfeeds a grown man, you kind of have to label her as a rotter. Number 4. Athena Stone – The Hunt Boy Howdy did The Hunt kick up a hell of a fuss before it even came out. Co-written by Damon Lindelof of Lost Fame, The Hunt imagines a world in which a radical left-wing group kidnaps and hunts right-wing people for sport. Think of it as The Hunger Games only taking place in an actual dystopia instead of a fictional one. Leading up the murderous bunch is Athena Stone, played by Hilary Swank. The former Disney star is far from sunshine and rainbows in this picture, as she pushes her ideology to the wicked extreme in an attempt to do what she thinks is right. And that's where the beauty of this character lies. Stone is fighting what she believes to be the good fight, only she does it in entirely the wrong way. Watching her will make you question your own beliefs and just how far you'd be willing to go to enforce them. Releasing a movie like this in the charged climate of a Trump-era America was always going to create headlines, but The Hunt did at least provide us with a memorable villain in amongst all of the controversy. Number 3. Art the Clown – Terrifier 2 had the first Terrifier movie come out this decade, Art the Clown would be at the very top of this list. Taking a more human approach to the idea of a killer clown, Art is one of the most brutal, sadistic, out-and-out -out evil characters the horror genre has seen in a long, long time. Terrifier 2, the sequel that came out in 2022, produced more of this grisly violence, only somehow they made it worse. In this one, Art, well, it's kind of hard to put into words exactly what he does. If you're really that interested, you should probably see it for yourself, but bring a bath bag. In terms of purely visceral, disgusting, demented horror, you can't ask for much better, or should that be worse, than Art the Clown. There's very little nuance to his character, I mean, he's a killing machine pure and simple, and one who revels in the bloodbath that he creates. But at the end of the day, isn't that what horror is really all about? Number 2. The Grabber – The Black Phone Ethan Hawke is a very fine actor indeed. The former Mr. Uma Thurman has put in some excellent performances over the years in movies like Training Day, Dead Poets Society, and the Before Trilogy. In 2021, Hawke tried his hand at being the main antagonist in a horror film when he starred as the Grabber in kidnap movie The Black Phone. If you couldn't already tell, the Grabber is named because he grabs kids, locks them in his brother's basement, and then tortures them to death. It's a well-trodden path for sure, but Hawke plays the character with such a chilling edge that it's impossible not to be scared by him. The fact that we don't see the Grabber do much until right at the very end only adds to the terror. Keeping the audience in suspense for the whole runtime was a genius move and one that paid off big time. So black phone prequel when? And number one, Pearl X. Whilst there's been plenty of outstanding one-off horror movie villains, the true greats are the ones you could build a franchise around. Leatherface, Jigsaw, Ghostface, these are the names that audiences will come back for time and time again, no matter how god-awful their later efforts turn out to be. And the top villain in our list today doesn't just have franchise potential, she's already proven that she can help an entire series all on her own. 
Enter X, the story of a group of adult filmmakers who run afoul of the wrong people and got everybody talking about Mia Goth and her dual-starring roles. Not only does she play Maxine, an aspiring pornographic actor, but she also gives the performance of a lifetime as the deranged old woman Pearl. Driven by an envy of youth and raw sexual desire, Pearl mercilessly destroys the film crew in increasingly more bloody ways. Whilst it's fun to see her character develop in the prequel movie that bears her name, there's no denying just how brutally brilliant she is as the all-out villain of X. And there we go, my friends. Those were the 10 greatest horror movie villains of the 2020s so far. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on the social medias, over on Twitter and Instagram, where it's at RetroJ but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.